Joining us more now is Peter McGuire from XMP. Very good Monday morning to you. Thanks for joining us again. Let's first start where we finished last week. It was all about that job starter out of the US. Stronger than expected. Absolutely, Andrew, and good morning. Uh, 199,000 nearly hit the 200, and I think it hit everyone by surprise. So, yeah, very much a, a better number than expected. That's going to be an interesting as far as this week and how that plays into decisions from Fed and policy. And, you know, there's a lot of moving parts associated with it. So, yeah, we'll just see how it rolls. But um, the, the market obviously liked it. S&P was well up 0.4%. Uh, so it was a good, uh, good close of Friday. Yeah, in fact, both the S&P and NASDAQ close to 20-month highs, in fact. Yeah. Pete, let's just take a look at the daily performance. Um, now, actually, oil finished strongly. Yeah, it did have a bounce to the upside and uh, was probably oversold, Andrew. And like anything, I mean, yeah, the smart money finds a haven and they thought that obviously there was a bit of upside there. And so I think it just bounced and it bounced up nicely. And you've got Brent just under $76 a barrel, WTI early 71s. And uh, maybe you're going to see a little bit further move to the upside this week. I, I won't be surprised for that to happen. And gold did come off. Um, you know, I guess that was off the back of that jobs report. We saw both Treasury yields and uh, and the dollar move higher. Absolutely. US dollar index sitting at just on 104 and gold was dumped um, from this time last. Well, on Monday, it hit uh, 2144 in intraday and now it's 2014. So, you know, $130 stripped out of it. Uh, that really is a bit of a wake up call. But again, if you were short, it's been a glory week for commodity traders and I don't think that uh, volatility is going to disappoint leading up to Christmas. Okay, Pete, uh, let's um, let's stay in the states and uh, look a key week ahead, uh, beginning with that read on inflation. What are the expectations there? Uh, you're looking at around about 3.1 percent down from 3.2. So that US CPI, Andrew, and that'll be interesting um, how that. I suppose, works in as far as global rhetoric, because this week is so intriguing. In a 60-hour window, you've got 60% of the globe's economy making rate decisions. So it's uh, it's an important number that everyone's keeping a very, very close eye on, and maybe it might even shoot further to the downside. It was got to see it drop, and uh, naturally the impact that has to decisions and uh, moving forward with, um, yeah, policy. Yeah, Pete, you talk about those key rate decisions coming this week, beginning, of course, with the Fed um, market pricing in no change. It's all about what comes next year. Absolutely, Andrew. And is it going to be March or May as far as the first blast off for a 25 basis point cut? And everyone's saying it could be as early as you know, that April sort of time frame. We've just got to see again, you know, where it rolls. And uh, everyone's got a, a, an opinion on it. And it's... I think the market is um, just yeah waiting to see the impact. We've got a number of key data points coming out this week. Of course, flash PMIs later in the week and retail sales also to take on board to a decision-making process as far as Fed. Now, you mentioned uh, look, that's a raft of uh, central banks with their decisions, obviously beginning with the Fed there. Uh, we've also got the Eurozone, the UK, Switzerland, uh, Norway yeah. and Sweden. Pete, let's start in... You're with the Eurozone, look, we obviously seeing weakness there in the economy. Uh, what are the expectations? Well, that's right, Andrew. You know, as far as PMIs are concerned, um, you know, both readings are expecting those to come out this week and they'll be below 50. So there's the, uh, you know, from a contraction standpoint, um, inflation, you're looking at around about 2.4% year on year in November. So where the, you know, the ECB thinks as far as decisions, I'm not expecting a rate rise, but, you know, we've just got to, again, we're in the hands of um, policymakers and how they interpret data. And, and naturally, I think the it's been some sort of um, a kindness to them with the euro sitting at around about 1.07. So, yeah, I, I won't be surprised to see a little bit more movement as far as euro dollar and euro probably yen as well. Pete, across the channel in the UK, um, now inflation going in the right direction has come off quite significantly. However, yeah. there is concern just where that economy is going at the moment. Absolutely, Andrew. You know, no, as far as Bank of England, it nosedived below 5% in October for inflation. So that's a very good sign. Uh, it's really coming under the pump as far as retail sales and, you know, the overall structure of the UK economy is fairly poor at the moment. So how that's going to, again, be interpreted from rate to policy decisions and 
I think the other side, of course, is they'll be looking at the Eurozone, what's going on in the States, as you mentioned, Switzerland, Sweden and other associated com uh, countries with a, with a viewpoint of probably holding steady at the moment. Although, I mean, you mentioned Switzerland, there is the possibility they could yeah. be one of the first to cut. Absolutely, yeah. So that'll be, uh, you know, as far as a Swiss franc, and uh, we're expecting 25 basis points this week. So um, they're, they've got a relatively low inflation number, and I won't be surprised for that to happen. But again, um, you know, we've just got to see how those numbers are interpreted and whether the Swissies are the first uh, cab off the rank. Yeah, going to be fascinating uh, just how that pans out for the week. Pete, let's come back home, take a look at what's going on locally then. And one of the key uh, data drops will be jobs, um, which remains you know, one, of the, one of those pieces that, um, that the RBA is looking at at the moment. What are the trends we're seeing here? Well, this is the issue, Andrew, as far as how the jobs are going to be interpreted, as, you know, from a number standpoint and where policy and where our central bank's going to be, I, I suppose, a thought process. Um, the, I, I think it's still relatively strong. I mean, you know, you ask people on the street, you know, how are you going as far as employment? If you want a job, you'll get a job in Australia. Um, so there's the first part of it. Uh, as far as wage growth, we've had relatively nice upticks. So um, it's it's just a a point in time that it's got to be interpreted by central bankers and the next part do we see possibly a rate rise you know february or march you know i'm not suggesting we're going to if you've got other central banks thinking of cuts but um we've just got to see retail sales and everything leading up to christmas it's a big month andrew indeed pete uh the prospect or at least the rba leaving the door open for the possibility of another rate cut has been certainly supportive of the aussie dollar However, taking yeah. a look at it, um, there's a real divergence of opinion as to where the Aussie is going to go next year. Exactly. You know, it's sitting just under 66. Uh, there's viewpoints out there that you could see a 67, 68. But the trouble is, Andrew, we're really at the, the beck and call in a lot of ways as far as what's going on with uh, US dollar and rate policy from the Fed. And it could it be hawkish for their dollar, which in turn is going to drive ours down. So you know, there's we're only a small little trading um, nation, and uh, I don't think any trader is going to be disappointed by you know trading volatility or big swings on the Aussie. So um, it's probably got a, every chance it could be a 64 handle or a 67 handle, Andrew. It's just uh, we're just going to see how it materialises. And Pete, equity wise, we are looking for a, a positive open uh, this morning. Um, yeah. How, how are we set? Do you think as we head towards Christmas? I think that'll continue. I mean, you know, many traders are saying, are you going to see a 5,000 for the s and I don't necessarily think it'll go that high, but you're sitting at around about 4,600. And I think it'll take, um, you know, a lot of the other markets up with it. So, uh, you know, we've got three weeks to roll till the end of the year. And again, uh, it's simply, you know, a couple of percent that can be added onto the Aussie market uh, in the short term. And, you know, trying to suggest where it's going to be in January is like throwing, you know, throwing darts at 